uh, I prepared some question actually that I would like to ask you. Sure. Uh, and then there is a lot. I can ask you a question and then if you want to ask me a question back, you do it. I would, no we... problem. I'm going to keep it open. No problem. Super. Genial. Genial. Alors, uh, yeah, the first question is basic is how are you? I'm doing fine. I mean, I've had some um, challenging days uh, with with some some loss and uh, and friends and family and um, and and the loss of some great musicians, Chick Corea and and um, Milford Graves, people that Milford I was more close to. He's a very special percussionist and drummer. Um, there is a film if you have not seen it, Sophie. I highly recommend it. It's called Full Mantis. All human beings and certainly all artists need to watch this film. Okay. Yeah, so that that's that's a film from a very special um, artist who recently passed and and called me to his house a couple of times to to um, to see him and you'll you'll see what he does. He does very interesting things about. I wish there's someone you could, even though I'm just meeting you for the first time, I really wish it was someone you could have met. You go to his house and he checks your heart rate and he puts it through a machine and then he records your heart rate for 15 minutes and plays you how your heart really sounds, not the way it sounds in a movie or you just only hear these two beats. There's actually like 15 or 30 beats. And then he puts the, that sound through a machine that gives you tones. He, he gives you a recording of the tones, but when the tones come across the screen, he can give you an idea of what's wrong with you um, spiritually. So um, feeling wise, when you meet people like that and you know them, you know how important they are, you know, you get a little numb. But outside of that, fantastic. And how are you feeling? I'm quite good. Yeah. Um, I had in Berlin and I had a really, really great time. Uh, I, yeah. And then I'm, I'm also working a lot at the moment, actually. So I'm really, uh, yeah, I have the feeling that some, yeah, some stuff are really uh, going in the right direction and it feels really good. Um, when and how did you start working as a musician? <laughs> when? Wow. That's a good question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess as a musician, technically, Working with me and getting paid, I'm going to assume. <laughs> I'm the youngest of three, and I had a lot of art and music in my family, in my community. A lot, there's a lot of famous musicians from my neighborhood. I'm in the Bronx. I'm in the Northeast Bronx. I would say 16, I was started to take serious, take lessons, and then um, use the environment, which was insanely rich and fertile for me to grow as a musician. There was a lot of tough musicians around here, great people I can ring the doorbell. They can come at my house. Uh, I would say around there, and 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 I think art chooses you. I don't think you choose art. Uh, at that age, before a year or two before, I was really into. Don't ask me why, but I was into motocross racing, something that most African American kids from the Bronx are not interested in. But I was a motorcycle freak. I love fixing bikes. I love the smell of the oil and the gas. Working on the transmission, so I like the machine as a as a machine. And racing to me was a really interesting thing because when you're racing, you're inside your helmet and it's just you. And even if somebody's ahead of you, um, you win the races by your time, how fast you can get around the track each time. You get time, you get time. So you learn how to ride this machine without using the brakes. You have to learn how to use inertia and gas and know how to lean on a bike, and all of these things that I thought were fantastic. So um, I did that first and then went to the drum kit, which my older brother played, so it was already in the house, but I decided the music bug really bit me hard. I had an experience meeting by accident, Miles Davis, and I went to see one other musician. Miles is my favorite musician kind of all time. And I, I walked into a club to see one person and Miles was happened to be there. Um, he was, no one had seen him in eight years. He was in hiatus and, and no one saw him in New York. No one. And, and I walked into the club to meet this famous drummer and he walked up, he walked past me and I was completely frozen. And to meet my favorite drummer and then to see Miles is when I, something happened. It was like intervention. I sold my bike, put the money on the drums. I cut, I dropped all my sports teams. I was a big jock. I liked tennis and basketball and bowling and these kind of things. I broke up with my girlfriend, 
and I said, I have to practice basically. So that's really where it started, but fantastic parents, fantastic home, great books, music, theater, international. My, my mom was really not into, into um, segregation in any way. We had a lot of people in our house all the time. She, she started so many programs for immigration when people would come to the Bronx from Eastern Europe, Poland, um, uh, whether Cuba, Puerto Rico, and the children suffered a little bit with the language. She would have the children come over to our house. Our house was like an information center. And this, this gave me a great example about art and humanity and people without realizing it. But I had a fantastic surrounding of incredible books and music. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. What's the project that you did that you are the most proud about? Uh, my most proud accomplishment for me is there's a really incredible museum, a new museum in Washington, Z, Washington D.C. called the African American Museum of Culture, Heritage Culture. And it's a beautiful museum in Washington, D.C. And being African-American and growing up in this country, there's so much I learned in my home and from my grandparents that isn't in any university or in any classroom textbook or any of these kind of places. So I think this museum is the great, great structure of this information and about how much contributions many children don't know. Now, in our house, we were quizzed on those things. But when I went to school, it was a typical saying, in my opinion, lies about Christopher Columbus and all of these kinds of things that for me um, were, I was shocked as a, as a young student in school to hear people were saying things like he discovered America. Or, so the museum is an amazing institution and Living Color was invited. The band that I play with Living Color, um, winning the Grammys or one of those kind of things, they have, can't hold a candle to being invited to this museum with my colleagues. I'm on the floor with a lot of rappers and a lot of artists, people that I grew up with. And it's an honor to be in a museum and to be there for doing what you love. Super. You know? um, and um, do you often go to see like dance or performance pieces? Oh, very often. My sister is a dancer. She she taught many years at Alvin Ailey's dance group and uh, Forces of Nature. So I grew up with this in the house. So I go often. Hers is, is more African based, but I also love ballet. Yeah, it's just it dances in the house. So um, it, I, I like to. I, I think it's connected when you're a drummer because when you look at any type of dance, especially West African dance, the drums you have to talk to the dancer. You have to communicate with their feet and their arms, and there's certain patterns you play. Mm. Um, thank you. And uh, I wanted also to ask you your relationship uh, with the city of New York, because I've never been to New York. Wow. Well, it's the city I'm born in. And um, um, my relationship here is complete love. And it's my, it's my laboratory of life. And having the experiences that I have here have prepared me to go to Berlin and to go to Morocco and to go to Senegal and to go to Paris and to go to Brussels. Being here in such a cosmopolitan city, I never felt I was really foreign in places because growing up in New York, you hear other languages, you hear German and French, and Spanish and Italian, you know, you hear all these different languages. My relationship to New York is really, um, I call the Bronx God's country, just to give you an example. <laughs> This is my garden of Eden here, being here, and what I've learned and what I've experienced here. So um, it's a it's a nice home base. To, the best way, so free to describe it, it's a, it would be like it would be like going to your family reunion or going home to your family and seeing your parents and your grandparents. And you don't have to behave mm -hmm. a different way. You know, they know what you like to eat. They know what you. It's comforting. New York has a way to me of there's equalizers here. There's things that make you know, you can balance yourself out. And in terms of the art scene, did you see like a, like a strong, a strong changes or evolution during your, <laughs> your career? Um, very huge. When I was a kid, graffiti was something that happened on the trains and in the schoolyard and on the walls. And um, it's still not given the credit it should be to me, but um, a few people came along and, and all of a sudden this became like art. You know, so yes, um, 
you know, Basquiat was somebody when I was playing in clubs, he was a guy that was just making a little name for himself from downtown. So there was all of these kind of things that were starting to happen. Um, uh, culture started to collect, started to clash. I think the impact, the eighties really had a really huge impact on art in general, especially in New York. Definitely. I watched some things that were, that were once in a closet become in MoMA, you know, in, in, uh, or, or in the Whitney. And these were things when I was young that only were happening in a neighborhood. And now they're three, $400,000 pieces. And um, what's your relationship to techno music? Well, I'm a drummer. So I love it. Even I used, I was a, I'm a bit of a, a nerd when it comes to technology. So sometimes I would sit next to the, stand next to the DJ. I would go to a club and I would never dance. I would just go in there with my little clock and just at this beat, everybody was on a dance floor. Okay, this next beat, half the audience left. And I would just make notes of the tempos that were the most popular. And then when I created my music, I wanted my music to have those influences in there because I was trying to reach a larger audience. So it's, I have questions, but I think they are a bit vague. So I don't know if, if it, yeah, you answer as you want. Um, how do you usually start like composing something or working on something? You know, how does it start? I mean, I don't have a, in, I don't have a system for it. Everything kind of affects me. It can happen in the shower. It can happen making breakfast. It can happen reading a book. I love noise. Oh. So sometimes even dropping a fork in a sink or, or um, uh, hearing someone else's music. Sometimes I go into creating things without any ideas just to see where my head is. Sometimes yeah, I know the, the, the subconscious takes a really big part of your creative, creative energy. So, so just to let it come out and, and play. So um, there, are things, there are times when I, when I obviously say, yes, I'm going to do something obvious, but I don't know, maybe as the older I get, the more I'm into the organic process of hearing things. Sometimes I buy gear that I don't know much about and I plug it in and I begin to noodle and the noodling with it is when the ideas come because I don't know how the machine works or the program works and I'm doing some things and I record everything and go back and then I say, oh, wow, okay, I like this, I like this. So. You have to push yourself. I feel I have to push myself, but I also have to allow myself the opportunity to be very experimental and 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 and, and unorthodox. But you work alone and with with bands. Most of it is alone. Okay. I want to give myself a lot of room to to noodle, to 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 to, to search, you know, before I bring other people to the table. But it's funny because I, I had to think, you know, when I knew that you were a uh, drummer, a musician, and I thought, oh, but for example, what's the place of music in my in my work? You know, because I don't do choreography. Uh, I do performances and every time it's, yeah, it's different settings. Mm -hmm. uh, but because I, I don't dance, uh, it's, it doesn't mean that I'm, I don't work with rhythm, rhythm for sure. Right. But I always think of the music mm -hmm like almost at the end of the process, but it's not something that I, I never think it together, you know, I, I don't I know. See. Yeah. And so at the end, it's always a bit strange because the piece is done. And then I thought, oh, maybe with some, yeah, some music, it can be nice, but it's, it never feels really organic for me, you know, to, 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 yeah, to hide the, to add the soundscape in my PC. So uh, for my for my last performance, it's a, it's a performance for one one spectator at a time. And I basically invite people to make a puzzle with me. Uh, wow. Uh, and so uh, for this, so I imagine the performance and uh, the setting and everything. Uh, I asked a person I know to come and to propose something for the soundscape of the performance. And at some point she, she produced something and she, she, she made me listen to it. And I didn't know if I thought it was good or not. I had no idea. So I thought, yes, it's, I think it's nice. It's okay. But it's like, I, I don't know. I don't have this sensibility. And I had to ask some other friends, what do you think of it? Because I, I, I really didn't know. It, and right. it fits the performance. She did a really good job. But at, at first sight, I, it was not clear for me. So yeah. How many have you done? Four pieces so far. And I'm quite slow, actually, you know, 
the pieces I'm doing now, it's on the practice of tennis. And uh, I think of this performance since two years. So since two years, it's in my head. And then I have to find residencies. I have to find budget, money, partners. So yeah, it, takes a, right. it takes a lot of time, but it's also fine because I must say I like walking, but not too much. I think I like when I, I, I have it under control and I can still do a lot of other things. Uh, my social life is really important. And yeah, so I, yeah. You're not married to it and, and, you're, and you're not, that's not your survival income. That's not what you're making a living off of, correct? Yes. Oh. No, no, yes, I do. Okay. You do? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that's so then, like you said, then it's just a choice. Yeah, I think it's, um, I, yeah, I manage actually to earn enough money doing my project, but I also give, give myself clear fra frame, you know? So yeah. I'm working a bit all the time. Like I, um, I always have a lot of project to do. But I, I managed to, yeah, I don't know, to work on them, but not too much. So it's a, uh, yeah, it's. A... No, it's great. It's it's everybody has their has their kind of position on. There's no kind of a way of you to say you're working too much or not enough or a, the art kind of dictates that I think and what you what you how you want to do it is very 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 important. I think it's great that you have that choice because that's your work, that's your tempo, that's how you work, and it's not a problem. Which, when you talk about finishing your project, just um, the interesting thing about what you said is most most films, if you get called to score a film, are done the way you work. The director and the filmmaker finishes the film and then they hand it to you and they basically tell you, don't screw it up. And it's as a composer, it's difficult sometimes when someone gives you a finished product to say, okay, now I need you to make music for this versus a few people that have called me that either invited me down to see some scenes where I can, or sent me, send me things so I can start to get an idea. I'm working on a documentary now and this woman is just sending me samples, beautiful samples of what she's trying to do, the traveling, the characters that are involved, the storyline. She's not even finished putting the film together, but coming in at this early stage for me, has been really great. Now this is not a this is a documentary, so it's different. You have to, you know, it's real personal. But I did I did like for the first time being invited into something that's even almost isn't even ready, isn't even organized thoroughly at the moment. So I, I think it's interesting that you you work that way. But I don't have a problem with it. So I'm open to whatever kind of tempo you have if you're doing something along that line and you say, you know what, here's here's my idea. Um uh, um, but we have time, I guess, it's until May, I guess this thing runs until May. So we have a lot of time to throw things back and forth and mm -hmm. get some ideas on things. And even maybe there could be some small exercises we could exchange on. You can say, here's 10 minutes of me doing my piece. Just give me a musical idea. I might say, here's 10 minutes of music, create something for that. We'll talk more about interesting, introductions into our work process yeah. could be um, maybe, or we could do a short, five minutes. Here's five minutes of movement. Check this out and what would you do for that? Boom, 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 boom. Maybe some things only need sound. They don't need instruments. I might see something and go, this sounds like, this looks like water. This looks like a, a, um, a, a traffic. <laughs> and then with this process, maybe, I don't know, we can talk about it, but it could be a string of, of segments. Let's say it's like in a book, it has five pages you turn. And the first one is movement and sound. The second one is just movement, no sound. The third one is just sound, no movement. And the fourth one is, you know, that, that's my idea. Like you, you might hear something and go, I don't want to put any movement to that. It could be interesting to have this two minute or five minute or three minute. And instead of doing one 15 minute piece, we could experiment with um, with doing segments. This way, if we have four or five different ideas, instead of saying we don't like one or we like another one, we can take pieces of the things and make a build a sentence or build a paragraph of these ideas and string them together. And maybe we have something more jagged and not something that's smooth and for everyone to just go, oh yeah, I like it. Maybe it has to startle them a little bit. So in many ways, we're, neither one of us are getting married to a concept. 
But we'll, I also would like at some point uh, to see you moving. General movement, walking movement or body movement or. I, I still don't know. I have to think. Okay, okay. That's no problem. That's no. Um, <laughs> Nobody's ever, no one's ever asked me for that before, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because I also thought maybe it it can also be um, an opportunity to do things that you are not not used to. Yeah, that's my life story. But yeah. <laughs> voilà. <laughs> so yeah, I will uh, I will I will think of some some things. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>